actually happened to be on the elevator with the representative Bud Halsey who filed the resolution to expel me. Um, I, I greeted him and I, I also asked him, did he learn anything, anything from this experience? He said that, you know, you know, it was part of leadership's decision to kind of ask him to file this. And, you know, but besides that was very quiet. But I, I think, you know, the Republicans are in a point of reflection here in Tennessee that what they did, they thought would happen without any resistance, but it has the world watching what's happening here. The Speaker um, of the House is trying to backtrack now. Um, but like I did, I said today, you know, we are calling for his resignation. He is an enemy of democracy and he doesn't deserve to be in that office of a Speaker of the House any longer. A lot of reflection going on all over the country, but especially there in Tennessee. Democratic Representative Justin Jones speaking last night, entering the Tennessee House that you're looking at now. Uh, the chamber, after the National Metro Council voted unanimously to reinstate him on Monday, Jones and his Democratic colleague Justin Pearson were expelled last week for violating decorum during a gun reform protest in the chamber. Gloria Johnson narrowly survived her removal vote and walked in the chamber by Jones's side. I want to welcome the people back to the people's house. I want to welcome democracy back to the people's house. The so-called Tennessee Three could be reunited tomorrow when Shelby County commissioners will vote on whether to reinstate Justin Pearson. So joining us now, Tennessee State Representative Gloria Johnson. Thank you, Representative. I appreciate you joining us this morning. As I said to you in the break, because of what happened in Tennessee, but also because of what happened in Kentucky as well. It is all connected. We appreciate you joining us. So you walk back into the chamber arm in arm with your colleague, Justin Jones. What was that moment like for you? It was, it was just, it just felt right. It was so good to have him back in the body, um, overwhelmingly supported by not only his district, but every district in Davidson County. And um, I just, I, I was, I didn't know if that would happen, that he would be back or that there would be any challenge to it. And it was so nice because, because um, both Rep Pearson and Rep Jones's voices are so important in our body. Mm -hmm. And we just need those young, passionate voices that are willing to fight every step for their constituents and, and put their constituents before lobbyists and corporations. I want to ask you about, you've been very upfront after the vote last week that you felt race played a role in Jones and Pearson's removal. But there are some of your Republican colleagues who are saying the difference was, in their estimation, that it wasn't race, that you argued, your attorney argued to the contrary, uh, that you never shouted or pounded the podium or displayed a sign uh, containing pol a political statement last week and also that you chose not to participate in a letter uh, that their attorneys had submitted that you your attorney didn't take part in that letter that you submitted your own do you still believe that it was race and how do you respond to your colleagues who are saying that um you know i'm I, i've been sitting in that body for a while i hear racist statements all the time and it was just a few weeks ago that one of my colleagues in our criminal justice committee um we were we had a bill they have a bill to bring back the firing squad and the electric chair and one of my colleagues said i think we should bring back hanging by a tree um he literally suggested lynching uh i, I think it's very clear there there have been statements in committee for years and um they've made themselves clear if you heard the questioning of those two young men compared to my questioning you definitely heard um, racially tinged questions. It, it's, it's blatant, quite frankly. Representative, do those statements make it onto the local media? Would you like to see more coverage? We just did a segment a, a couple of minutes ago about state legislatures not getting the coverage that is warranted and some of these things going on in silos with people doing and saying reprehensible things. Yes, you know, I, I think it's critical that we have our eyes on our state legislature. That's, that's, where, that's where democracy dies. That's where they're attacking because they can in those red states or those supermajority states. And um, we've got to have our eyes on everything that's happening there because it is, you know, democracy dies in darkness. And I feel like for a while, Tennessee has had no eyes on what's happening. During COVID, we didn't have a lot of visitors inside the Capitol. And um, people couldn't come if they wanted to come for gun violence bills or, 
you know, some of those things. It was hard to get people to the Capitol because of COVID. Now that we've opened back up and people are coming in, it's great to have those people's voices in the hallways to remind folks that that's who they work for and not the lobbyists and the special interest groups, which is, I feel like, you know, their bosses. Yeah. Uh, you said democracy dies in darkness. Speaking of democracy, um, Justin Jones has called for a Republican speaker, Tennessee House, uh, the Tennessee's House, uh, Cameron Sexton, to resign, calling him an enemy of democracy. Do you also think Sexton should resign? Uh, yes. I mean, you know, we had a disgraced speaker right before him, and um, he is doing many of the same things, just not as zealous and openly, I guess. But um, he has limited debate to almost nothing on the House floor. He um, make they make up the rules as they go along. You know, I, we asked for um, be up to be able to show video and we were told no video. Then we come in and the first thing they do is make a motion to have video. And of course they have the votes. So they vo voted in their video, but we weren't prepared for video because they had already told us no. They change the rules as they go on. There's no debate. Our mics are cut off. Um, we are some, most often, you know, not called on. The other day when America was watching, we had more healthy debate on bills before those, um, before the hearings. We had more healthy debate on bills than I think we've ever had in three years or three or four years on the House floor because people were watching. So because of what happened, it, it, the legislature has been so divided. Do you think that get, in getting the people's work done, is this going to make it harder or easier moving forward now that this controversy has reached a worldwide audience? You know, that's an interesting question, and I've been asked that question. And um, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. Uh, but I'm hopeful that they're listening, that they're open, that they realize perhaps, you know, we shouldn't stay with business as usual. We should be a more deliberative body, a more transparent body. And, and I'm going to be hopeful that's going to happen. It, it remains to be seen how they actually handle this, if they use it as a learning experience. Um, hopefully we will know soon by being able to, to deliberate and talk about some of these gun violence, um, uh, gun sense regulations and legislation we want to put in because we want to protect the community. You know, I always hear, oh, you know, don't talk about it yet. It's too soon. But if you don't talk about it, what we see is in the very next day or two, we have another horrible incident of gun violence. Yeah. And so we do, the time to talk about it is yesterday because we have got to stop this. Yeah. And I would hope that my colleagues get on board and help us do something that instead of beefing up security and having tanks at schools, as one of our members suggested, we prevent guns from getting to the schoolhouse door. Because if you're ready for a gunfight at the schoolhouse door, people are going to get hurt. But we can prevent guns from ever coming to the schoolhouse door or, or to, to the bank doors. You know, that's what we want to do. We want to work on prevention. We don't want gun battles at the schoolhouse door. We will be watching what happens in the Tennessee legislature tomorrow when there is a vote for Justin Pearson's reinstatement and beyond. Thank you, Tennessee State Representative Gloria Johnson. We appreciate it. Be well. Thank you.